John, while healthcare reform has lost some ammunition and steam right now, kind of fizzled, let's back up and remember when there was a great demand for it. Why did we need healthcare reform in the first place? Callie, people are so confused about it. It breaks down to four basic things. One is there are 46 million people in this country who are uninsured, and that is a big deal, okay? Number two, we need reform within the insurance company industry, all right? If you, if you get sick, your insurance premiums get jacked up, and then they were denying people insurance in the first place if they had a pre-existing condition, okay? Three was just the inefficiency in the system. Two and a half trillion dollar industry a year, and estimates are about 30% of procedures are unnecessary. So we need to have a lot more efficiency. And four, there's a lack of preventive, uh, prevention, preventative medicine in this country. So those were the four basic things. That's why people wanted to have healthcare reform. Then what happened? Well, what happened was, a lot of momentum, there was a House bill that was passed, and then August happened. Obama wanted so badly for the whole thing to be done before the August recess. Well, it didn't happen, and at the August recess, the White House and President Obama lost control of the message, right? You remember how all these town hall meetings, and then anger coming out anger, of these meetings. And there was the, the accusation, fear. fear. There, there was a, here's a great example. There was a provision saying that uh, the government, you know, the new plan would pay for doctors to discuss end-of-life care decisions with their patients. Well, that was somehow twisted into that there would be these death squads, right, and we would, be, we would be taking grandma and floating her out on an ice floe to die, okay? And of course that wasn't true, but people got scared. There was a lot of shouting that happened at the town hall meetings. That got a lot of coverage. Um, there was the sense and the fear around the country that, oh, there's a government takeover of health care. And, and suddenly we came out of August and there was a lot of ammunition from, from the side that wanted to stop health care reform, right? President Obama had an, a, a big speech in September. It seemed to get under control. The House passed their bill in November. The Senate passed their bill in December. And it seemed like it was all but assured that there would be health care reform passage. And then January 19th, Scott Brown gets the seat that was ironically Ted Kennedy's Democratic seat in Massachusetts now goes to a Republican and suddenly the filibuster proof 60 votes goes to 59. But there was a lot of momentum building before that that just kind of capped it all off and a lot of it seems to be the fear of the unknown because this is a very complex issue and complex bill the the house bill was over a thousand pages you actually right. read it probably one of the few americans the that bill. have yeah, and I you interviewed read the bill. president about it what do you think will remain the same about that bill and what is going to have to change well there are two things i mean the the uh, house does not like the cadillac tax as proposed this the cadillac tax was that the very expensive provisions, you know, the people from, they were saying Morgan Stanley and, 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 and uh, Goldman Sachs who had these very expensive health care programs that they would be taxed and they would pay for it. Well, it turns out that the House was worried because they think that'll affect teachers, firefighters, policemen, people who are union workers who had this negotiated, you know, the better policies negotiated as part of their deal. So they, wanna, they want that changed. Um, they also want affordability provision, provisions improved. So they want the subsidies for the poor are larger in the House than in the Senate. So they want that, that changed. And uh, right now, there are four possibilities, okay? The f oh, I should say, before that, what's really interesting is, yeah. in all of the discussion, right, the American public still says that they think there should be health care reform, okay? But the vast majority of people say they're totally confused about this, right? I mean, you t I, I just polled like about a half dozen people here, to, smart people at CBS, and I said, what do you think about health care reform? And it's too confusing, all right? Very smart people just don't understand it. And the Kaiser Family Foundation um, had a health tracking poll today that I, that I got. I spoke to uh, Drew Altman, who was their head, and he pointed out a couple of things. The lesser known provisions, most people who say that they don't support the bill, if they actually find out specifically what's in it, will then change their mind. So it's a communication problem. Well, what a problem with messaging. And the most fascinating one was, what do you think the percentage of the public is who believe that the legislation will reduce the deficit? The Congressional Budget Office said it's going to reduce the deficit over 10 years. Okay. I think the perception by the majority is that it's going to increase the deficit. Right. It turns out that only 15% of the people realize that it will actually decrease the deficit according to the, to the Congressional Budget Office. And of those 15%, once they're told that it's going to decrease the deficit, 56% of them say that they're going to now support the legislation. Just some other things. 
Per, the majority of people didn't realize that there's no federal money for Ill illegal immigrants, that it's going to help to close the Medicare donut hole, that it's going to extend dependent coverage through age 25 for dependents, and that there'll be taxes on drug and device makers and insurers. So what a failure of communication that people don't understand this because, you know, just the details are just so overwhelming Absolutely. for people. So what would you say, though, are the core concerns from patients and from your colleagues, from doctors? What do you think the main concerns for health care reform are? Well, I, I think people don't trust that it's going to all actually work. It's just, they don't understand it, as we've seen from the, from the polls. They're, they're concerned that they're going to lose their, their, what they have. They don't see how getting universal coverage or, or reforming the system is going to help them, help their family, when actually you have you know, over, over a uh, decade that um, there's been a huge increase in much more, about three to four times increase in the cost of insurance policies than in the increase in wages. So it just can't keep going this way, right? Uh, but people don't, you know, don't understand that when you have universal coverage that there's more security for everybody or they don't believe it because they think, well, just it's going to somehow affect me. I'm not going to be able to choose the doctor that I want to choose. But actually nowhere in there does it say that it's going to affect the, your ability to choose your doctor. So we're oscillating between wanting it and knowing we need it, but fear of what it's going we to be and it, how it's going to affect want us. We don't want it. You know, people are So are, then are what's so going to happen afraid. going forward? What do you okay. think happens in the next year? So going forward, there are four possibilities, okay? One is nothing. They do nothing. And Which seems unlikely. I think it's unlikely, you know, just politically. Two is they cherry pick. They start decreasing the number of specific measures that are done. They, only, they just pick the best ones. And there's a lot, of, a lot of experts I spoke to said that's just not possible because it's just going to, you need comprehensive reform, okay? The third was that they just ram it down the throat of the House. They don't change it, and they don't change the Senate bill, and they say, you know, this is what it's going to be, and that's not going to happen. The House is not going to accept that. And the fourth, which House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said today, is where really where she's leaning is through a complicated procedural thing called reconciliation, okay? With reconciliation, you would have the current Senate bill as is, but in addition, you would negotiate, I guess, between the White House and the Senate and the House. They'd come up with changes, line item changes. They would have to, each one's have to do with the budget. And that could take a while. Well, only 51 votes are needed, not the 60, mm -hmm. to pass okay. that, and you can't filibuster it. So that's kind of where some people think it's headed, but really, who knows? I think a lot of Republicans would be really ticked off if that's what happens, and uh, they might do some other procedural things that, that uh, muck up the work. So, who has the crystal ball, but I will tell you this, the whole thing reminds me of the Greek myth, you know, with Sisyphus, where, you know, each time that healthcare reform is attempted to, to, to happen, uh, you get that Sisyphus had a, was, was, was doomed to push the ball, the, the rock up the hill, and just when he would get it up, the, up to the very top, it would roll back down on him. And each time there's something with healthcare reform, an attempt, that, that rock gets a little bit farther up the hill. And here, it just seemed like it was almost at the top. I mean, how could you miss? It's passed in both houses. You've got the lock. And then a big they surprise. The supermajority. And the ball. Is the ball where it's going to happen with the ball? Well, I have a feeling you're going to be covering this story for some time to come. It's probably not going to get resolved uh, within the next yeah, couple so of weeks. I think we'll that's have for sure. plenty more Dr. LaPook stories on this in the near future. Thank you so right. much. Appreciate Thanks, it.